Good morning, and welcome to Sunday School. The lesson for this morning is Consequences of Giving Challenging Advice. It is taken from Jeremiah 38, chapter, verses 14 through 23. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come out this Sunday morning to study your word. And please give us the understanding so that we can go out and tell others about what we studied this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The key verse is, Then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, If I declare it unto thee, wilt thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, wilt thou not hearken unto me? And this has come from Jeremiah, the 38th chapter, verses 15, the King James Version. Introduction. This lesson is foreshadowing the destruction of Judea. The last monarch is Zebediah, who did not live up to his expectation as a godly ruler. His name, Mattathah, was changed to Zedekiah by Nebuchadnezzar when the kings, when Babylon's king chose him to succeed jo, jo, Jehoiachin. And this is coming from the second kings, verse chapter 24, verse 17. Zedekiah reigned over Judea during the most tragic time in its history. Zedekiah was one of the of the, of the long line of kings who did not who did evil in the sight of the Lord. You find this in 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 19. Zedekiah was in deep trouble because he rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon's sovereignty over Judea when he appeared appealed to Egypt for military support. The king pleaded with Jeremiah to predict, it, to predict his future. However, Zedekiah would not heed to Jeremiah's warning. Even though he asked the prophet to pray for the people, Jeremiah faced danger of his own as he is arrested and charged with treason. Many of the Judeans were going to the enemy and Jeremiah was suspecting of having gone over to the Babylonians while he was attempting to go home. The prophet is arrested and placed in a dungeon to await his fate. Jeremiah feared for his life as well as the life of the doomed nation. Jeremiah is released and is now brought before the king in a last minute standoff as the king made one last attempt to gain favorable report from the prophet. Now this is what I want you to think about. Zedekiah's pride and, his, and faith in his position as king prohibited, prohibited him from aligning with the counsel and protection of the Lord. Instead of following Jeremiah's advice, Zedekiah resisted the powerful Babylon king, which led to his downfall and destruction of his family. The scriptures for this morning. The first part is Jeremiah 38 verses 14 through 16, and I'll be reading the New Revised Standard Version. King Jedediah sent for the prophet Jeremiah and received him at the third entrance of the temple of the Lord. The king said to Jeremiah, I have something to ask you. Do not hide anything from me. Jeremiah said to, to Zedekiah, If I tell you, will you put me to death? Will you not? And if I give you advice, will you not listen to me? So King Zedekiah swore an oath in secret to Jeremiah, As the Lord lives, who gives us lives, I will not put you to death or hand you over to these men who seek your life. There's something I want you to know. Although Zedekiah had some of Jeremiah, this is the 
sack of secret meeting between the prophet and the king. The purpose of this secret meeting conference was to exact prophecy that would be favorable to the king and guarantee Jeremiah safety in the midst of the national crisis. That's just like what we're going through now, the COVID-19. We have to resist being around people that's got it, so we won't catch you. Zedekiah requests that the prophet be truthful to the questions that he will seek from Jeremiah. Zedekiah emphasized that Jeremiah does not hide, hide or conceal anything from him. That's just like if we confide in a friend and we want their truth about a situation, we don't want them to lie to us. We want them to tell us the truth. Uh -huh. Give us, a, you know, how they really feel about what we ask them. And regardless of the message he would, that he, Jeremiah would give the king, Jeremiah does not trust the king, especially in how he may respond to Jeremiah's prophecy. Sometimes, you have to watch who you talk to because you can't trust them even if they are your best friend because they might still tell you something wrong and still set you up for being let down. Jeremiah had two, voiced two objections. Jeremiah asked the king whether if he, re if he revealed the prophecy, would he be put to death? Jeremiah does not have any guarantee that the king's anger will not turn against him. Consequently, Jeremiah says that whether whatever advice he gives Zedekiah will be wasted because the king will not heed the counsel or listen to the prophet's word at all. In other words, Jeremiah was saying that if I tell you, King uh, Zedekiah, will you listen? Will you accept what I'm telling you that's coming from the Lord? Are you going to do what the Lord tells you to do? So he was worried about what the king would do. King Zedekiah desired to know the immediate future places him at the mercy of Jeremiah. Although the king swore that he would not kill Jeremiah for the prophecy. Moreover, the king did and it gives a worthy oath using the phrase, as the Lord lives, as if he needed to convince Jeremiah that God would side with Zedekiah in this secret interview. But the problem with this is that God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, not the king. The latter attempting to reverse the direction of the meeting and a certain of his dominance over Jeremiah. Zedekiah promises that he would not kill the prophet and ask another captain. Jeremiah would not be handed over to the men who sought his death. On the other note, Zedekiah did not promise that he would not heed Jeremiah's message. In other words, Zedekiah told Jeremiah that he wouldn't turn him over to the people that's seeking his life. And he didn't even promise that he would take heed to the message. Second part, Zedekiah interviews Jeremiah. This is taken from Jeremiah, the 38th chapter, verses 17 through 20. The King James New Revised Standard Version. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, if you will only surrender to the officials of the king of Babylon, then your life shall be spared, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you and your household shall live. But if you do not surrender to the officials of the king of Babylon, then this city shall be handed over to the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and you yourself shall not escape from their hands.
King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Judeans who have deserted to the Chaldeans, for I have, for my might, be handed over to them, and they would abuse me. Jeremiah said, That is not, that would not happen. Just obey the voice of the Lord and what I say to you, and it shall go well with you, and your life shall be spared. Okay, what, what Jeremiah is saying, Jeremiah does not change his message or alter it. He don't sugarcoat it just to please the king. He wants the king, he's advising the king to understand the reality of the enemy forces that are pressing towards the city. In contrast, Jer Zedekiah was sworn Jeremiah's presence, proclaims his position and authority, authority declaring that if the king would accept defeat and surrender his forces to the Babylonians, his life would be spared. Moreover, the fierce Babylonians will fear for their savagery and unconditional warfare. They will not burn the holy city Jerusalem and reveal the temple. If Zedekiah heeded Jeremiah's prophecy, Zedekiah may not have been attentive to the prophet's message because the king was concerned for his own safety. Nonetheless, Jeremiah assured Zedekiah that if he followed the Lord's advice, which we all must do, follow God's advice and listen to his word and do what he tells us, the king's household will be saved. If we listen to God's word and do what he tells us to do, then we will be saved along with our household. However, if we rebuke or ignore, ignore the prophecy direction and did not surrender our feelings, our, 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 our sinful ways, we, like Zedekiah, would be forced by the king's Babylon's army, and the city would be destroyed, and it would be burned down. As Jeremiah insisted, the entire royal household, including the king, their wives, children, servants, would suffer the most terrible death at, at the hands of the unscrupulous invaders. The king was thinking, seemed to be naive. In other words, he wasn't really thinking right. He was simple man. Zedekiah was afraid of the Babylonians, and however, he revealed that he also feared his countrymen, whom he referred to as the Jews. The king is worried about the Judeans who have turned against him and defeated to the Judeans. The Judeans had assessed their plight and decided that it was in their own best interest to go over to the enemy. Sometimes we do that. We think of our own best interest in, in, instead of staying right where we're planning at and let God have his way. Mm -hmm. uh, Zedekiah, as it goes on, Zedekiah understands the symbolism of public humiliation and shaming of a van vanquished king, public torture and slaughter of a king, and his family signified the government's overthrow and the annexing of the country and the transfer of power to another in, in, entity. In other words, it's just like we do elections. We have to get somebody that's going to do right by the people and not stand there and do right for their own, their own goods. So we have the right to vote them in and vote them out. And this is giving them power to do what's right for God's people. Furthermore, and what will be realized as a terrible campaign, people will become docile and submissive to conquering forces. 
Zedekiah was terrible that his countrymen would be captured and handed over to the enemy who would abuse and subsequently execute him. In other words, he was afraid that the people that was in his country was going to turn him over to Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill him. It may be possible that Zebekiah would have been cruel to some of the populace and would integrate their favor to revolt against the king. Just like uh, so-called Trump, how he told the people to go to the capital and go in there and break in and, and, and destroy the, the, the capital, go after certain wounds. He was behind all of that, so they say. I wasn't there. But he was still like Ze Ze Zedekiah, a king in place that was thinking more of himself than he was of other people. It may be possible that Zedekiah had to obey the mandate of the Lord and trust in the words and the message of God's prophet to ensure that he and his people, his family, would be saved. Okay, Zedekiah didn't do this. Once again, he was looking out for himself. He won't trust in what the prophet said. He won't take heed of the warning. So he put his life and his family's life at risk. Okay, number three. Zedekiah rejects Jeremiah's advice. This is coming from the 38th chapter, verses 21 through 23. But if you are determined not to surrender this, what the Lord has shown me, a vision of all women remaining in the household of the king of Judea, being led out to the officials of the king Babylon and saying, Trusted, your trusted friends have seduced you and have overcome you. Now your feet are stuck in the mud. They desert you. All your wives and your children shall be led out to the Chaldeans, and you yourself shall not escape from their hand, but shall be seized by the king of Babylon, and this city shall be burned with fire. Okay, I want you to know this, that Zedekiah is warned that if he kept basilicating and refused to heed the word, Lord's word, a horrible fate awaits him. Jeremiah word warns the king that he cannot follow his fear, or allow his fear of the, over the prospect of suffering at, at of defeat and disgrace to turn himself away from the Lord's will. Mm. In this instance, Jeremiah accusing King Zedekiah of cowardice. He was saying that the king was afraid. And by giving in to his fear, he will suffer what he was trying to avoid. Zedekiah's gully, gullibility pointed to his corrupt advisors, whom he thought were his friends. In other words, he had other advisors that he thought was his friend that was corrupt also. Mm -hmm. But are now revealing that lack of ability, of fidelity. Now, when he desperately needed loyalty, the prophecy revealed that they would look out for their own self-interest. You got people that are do that today. Look out for their own self-interest. When you think they're for you, they're against you. Jeremiah's prophecy warned the king that his decision to reject God's message will have a serious and deadly consequences. Jeremiah concluded this section of the message by telling Zedekiah that his family, his wives, and children would be given to the Chaldeans. He could not escape, but be handed over to the enemy. In other words, he didn't stand a chance. 
if he disobey God's word, everything he has will go to the Chaldeans. Mm. He will lose his wife, his children, and his home. He could not escape from being handed over to the enemies. Once again, Jeremiah exhilarates that because he decided to re be reject God's direction, the city will be burned. King Zedekiah, cowed by his fear, frightened by his officials, will offer Jeremiah advice about assuring his safety. So uh, Zedekiah still won't give in, he still won't listen to uh, Jeremiah, and he was punished. Now as we come to a close of this lesson, this is something that I want you to remember. Jeremiah is called to deliver a word on behalf of God to Zedekiah, the king of Judea. Delivering this word is treacherous because Zedekiah and his officials, officials disdain for truthful but unfavorable messages from God. Jeremiah's commitment to speaking the truth got him imprisoned. Regardless of the circumstances, he was determined to speak out, speak truthfully for God. Zedekiah had a wonderful opportunity to write a wayward path. He could have averted disaster, but his fear, lack of faith, disabled any chance of following Jeremiah's message. Okay? What this is saying to us today, we have the chance to obey God's word, to avoid the, 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 the uh, destruction in our lives, to avoid going to hell if we don't listen to his word. But if we don't obey what God says, our fear and our lack of faith will cause us to fall out in the fold of God's hand, not be a part of his sheep. And we, like Zedekiah, will either burn or lose out. Now this is what I want you to hear. The women in verse 22 sang or uh, deserves that a remnant of him lying. A, a loss of the lining of a hymn is a long meal singing method that does not have a constant beat. However, it is guided by the leader of the song. Consider singing a song like I Surrender All in a long meal fashion and the emphasis that will be placed on a certain silk. In other words, the women were singing a song that didn't have a beat. They had a leader that would call out the words uh, like, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I give. And then they were singing right behind. So this is what I want you to hear. Hear a hymn song. Listen to it and see if you can follow the beat. As Christians, I want you to live it. We must not be hard-headed in our relationship with God. Hard-headedness is hurtful to God and ultimate, ultimately ruin our relationship with Him. Being hard-headed, we, we, we lose the closeness that we have with God and ruin our relationship. So in order to stay in touch with God, we have to listen to Him and don't be hard-headed, or else he will chastise us like our parents would do when we were hard-headed and we didn't listen to them. I want you to share Zedekiah's fundamental faith of his inability to trust the word of the Lord. As believers, we must listen and obey God's word, even as it may be communicated through a prophet. This week, share the news that obedience is what God desires. Obedience is better than any sacrifice that we can give to God. In other words, 
study the word. This is what God, this is how God is communicating to me. Be able to go out and explain to somebody else that don't know what the word is saying. Let them know that God is speaking through his word and that they must obey or get a clear understanding of what God wants you to do, what we, we must do. We are a prophet, just like they are in the olden days, but we are called missionaries. We go out and tell people what God is trying to get us to do. And if they fail to listen, it's not on you, it's on them. You must say, well, Lord, I've done what you asked me to do. The blood is not on my hand. So read your Bible. Study your Bible. Understand what God is trying to tell you. Then go out and tell somebody else. If they ask you a question, pick up the Bible and say, well, let's try to read the Bible and explain it to them. And then if they get a better understanding, then they could go on and tell somebody else that they need to respect God's word, obey God's word in order to make it into heaven. Because if they don't, they'll be just like King Zedekiah. Lose the household and everything they own and even that. And this is all I have to say this morning. The consequences of giving challenging advice, I advise you to listen, to study, Obey God and do His, his bidding because you, you are the only mouthpiece that He has now here on earth. And we must do what He has us to do. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson of challenging, giving of advice. Let us follow your word, Lord. Let us do your word and let us obey your word. And Father, let us go out and tell others that don't know about your word what your word has in store for them. And Lord, let us be obedient and not be like Zizekiah because we don't want to lose our soul and wind up in hell. Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening.